Hello, everyone. My name is Ifan Sang. Today, I'm honored to give a talk about our result. Guaranteed output theory comes free in honest majority MPC, co-authored with Weibo Goya and Chen Zhu. Multi-party computation allows several mutually distrusted parties to evaluate the function on their private inputs. It guarantees that the protocol execution does not leak anything about the individual inputs beyond what can be inferred from the function output. Usually, the functionality is represented as a circuit, and in particular, here we chose to use an arithmetic circuit over a finite field. The circuit supports addition gates and multiplication gates. In this work, we are interested in the honest majority setting. Assuming broadcast channel and peer-to-peer -peer private channels, our goal is to construct an unconditional secure MPC protocol with guaranteed output delivery. Before we move on, I would like to motivate my talk by answering the following two questions. First, why do we care about unconditional MPC? A key feature of unconditional MPC is that we do not need any extensive cryptographic primitive such as public key encryption or obvious transfer. And the protocol is secure unconditionally. Comparing with protocols in the computational setting, one major benefit is that protocols usually do not require, require complicated and time-consuming local computations. And it is possible to achieve fairness and guaranteed output delivery in this setting. As a result, the most efficient MPC protocols are in the unconditional MPC paradigm. Second, why do we focus on communication complexity? Since the local computations are typically simple, often just a series of linear operations, the efficiency of a protocol in the real world is dominated by its communication complexity. There are two different types of adversary. One is a semi-honest adversary. This kind of adversary follows the protocol honestly, but try to learn extra information from what he received. The other one is a fully malicious adversary. It can deviate from the protocol arbitrarily. If an MPC protocol allows a premature abort, then we say this protocol is secure with the abort. If an MPC protocol can ensure the success of the computation, then we say this protocol is fully secure or guaranteed output delivery. In general, to achieve malicious security, we need to compare semi ice protocols using additional tools, for example, GMW compiler in the computational setting and a verifiable secret sharing in the unconditional setting. Apparently, security against fully malicious adversary is more difficult to achieve than semi honest adversary. Therefore, we ask the following question Is it necessary to pay for malicious security? In this work, we show that we can achieve basically the same efficiency as the best known protocol in the semi ion setting. Here is a comparison of recent constructions of communication efficient MPC in the ion majority setting. In the semi ion setting, the best known construction is the DM protocol, which requires six elements per party per gate. This can be viewed as a baseline for the communication complexity. Recently, there are two works, CGH plus 18 and NV18, both achieving 12 elements per party per gate in the setting of security with the board. In this work, we obtain the first secure with the board MPC protocol, where the communication complexity matches the semi ions DM protocol. We make a further improvement of the DM protocol, which allows us to reduce the communication cost from six elements to 5.5 elements. In the setting of guaranteed output delivery, the best known previous constructions have bad dependencies on either the circuit depth or the circuit width. In BSFO 12, it has the term order of D times N square, where D is the circuit depth. In AKP plus 16, it has the term order of W times poly N, where W is the circuit width. The efficiency of these protocols will suffer when either the circuit depth is very large or the circuit width is very large. In this work, we give the first construction where the communication complexity per party is linear in the circuit size. 
our protocol achieves 5.5 elements per party in the best case, and 7.5 elements when one or more corrupted parties are identified. This result is obtained by compiling our secure with the board protocol into a fully secure one. Here is an outline of this talk. We will start with the best known semi on uh, communication efficient protocol in the semi on setting, then show how to get a secure with the board protocol in the fully malicious setting. And finally, how to reach a fully secure protocol with comparable efficiency as the best known semi on protocol. We will use square brackets X with subscript T to represent a DVT sharing of the value X. It requires at least T plus one shares to do reconstruction and any T shares do not leak any information about X. Here are two properties of Shamir secret sharing scheme. The first one is linear homomorphism, namely adding two DVT sharings X and Y yields a DVT sharing of the secret X plus Y. The second property is that Multiplying two DVT sharings X and Y gives a DVT sharing of the secret X times Y. The best known semi ice protocol in this setting was proposed by Damgard and Nelson in 2007. Recall that a semi ice adversary follows the protocol honestly, but try to learn extra information from the messages it has seen. The high level idea of the DM protocol is to compute a DVT sharing for each wire. By the nature of Shamir secret sharing scheme, the shares held by corrupted parties are not enough to reconstruct the secret and therefore are just several independent values. This ensures the security of the protocol. To make this idea work, we need to take care of multiplication gates and addition gates. Recall that the Shamir secret sharing scheme is linear homomorphic. Therefore, for addition gates, all parties can simply add their shares locally. The core idea of the DM protocol is how to evaluate the multiplication gate. Assume the input share rings are X and Y. We know that all parties can locally can multiply their shares to obtain a degree 2D share ring of X times Y. Therefore, it is sufficient to do the reduction to this share ring. The idea of the DM protocol is to prepare a pair of random share rings of the same value R. One share ring is a degree T share ring and the other one is a degree 2D sharing. To do degree reduction, all parties use the random degree 2D sharing as a mask. Then the first party collects all the shares, reconstructs the secret, and sends the result back to other parties. Finally, all parties can locally subtract the random degree T sharing and obtain the sharing they want. We observe that all parties do not need to know the reconstruction, re reconstruction result. P1 can instead distribute a sharing of the result. All parties can still get the correct sharing they want. Also, we do not need to keep the reconstruction results secret. P1 can choose the last T shares to be zero. Using this T shares and the secret E, P1 reconstructs the whole sharing and only distributes the shares to the first T plus one parties. The last T parties take zero as their shares. These two observations allow us to reduce the communication cost from six elements to 5.5 elements. Now let's switch to a fully malicious adversary. A fully malicious adversary can arbitrarily deviate from the protocol. So it is clear that the DM protocol is no longer correct in the fully malicious setting. For example, corrupted parties can distribute the inconsistent sharings or even refuse to part participate in the computation at some point. Surprisingly, it has been shown that the DM protocol provides perfect privacy on the inputs of honest parties before output phase. One approach to obtain the malicious security is to first run the DM protocol until the output phase, then check the correctness of the computation, and finally reconstruct the output. Note that addition gates are evaluated locally. Therefore, it is sufficient to only check the correctness of modifications. This approach has been used in several previous works. In our construction, we rely on the technique in BBCG plus 19 to achieve sublinear communication in the number of multiplication gates. Compared with BBCG plus 19, we extend the use of this technique 
to the n-party setting. The original technique is for zero knowledge and fully linear PCPs. We modified this technique to make it more suitable for MPC. Furthermore, we explore recursion to make it even more efficient in practice. Our idea is inspired by two other techniques. One is an extension of the DM protocol to handle inner product operations. The other one is batch-wise multiplication verification introduced in BSF 12 and its extension for inner product operations introduced in NV18. For the extension of the DM protocol, the main point is that all parties can locally obtain the gratuity sharing of the inner product of two vectors x and y. Then it is sufficient to do a deep reduction to this sharing. This becomes the same problem solved by the DM protocol. Note that the communication cost is independent of the dimension of the input vectors. This extension has been observed and used in many previous works, for example, the work CGH plus 18. The second technique is batch-wise multiplication verification. Given a batch of M multiplication tuples, the goal is to check whether all the tuples are correct. In fact, combining the DM protocol and the batch-wise multiplication verification already yields a secure with a board protocol. This is exactly the construction in NV18. However, we will see that the verification requires additional M modifications where we want to verify the modifications with sublinear cost. At a high level, we want to construct three polynomials f, g, and h, such that for the first m evaluation points, fi, gi, hi corresponds to the i's multiplication tuples. Furthermore, we want these three polynomials to satisfy that h equals f times g if all the multiplication tuples are correct. In this way, verifying multiplication tuples becomes verifying whether h equals f times g. For example, in this toy case where we have three tuples, we can list the requirements for these three polynomials in the table. Note that for both f and g, they can be polynomials of degree m minus one. We can use the grand interpolation to compute the Q coefficients of f and g using xi and yi respectively. If we want h to be f times g, h should be a polynomial of degree two times m minus one. However, we only have m points, which are insufficient to determine the polynomial h. Therefore, we will compute another m minus one multiplications to provide enough points for the grand interpolation. For example, in this toy case, we first compute the shear rings of both f and g at evaluation points four and five then compute the modifications, and the results are denoted by d4 and d5. Now we can do interpolation to compute the coefficients of h. Now we have all three polynomials. To test whether h equals f times g, it is sufficient to test a random evaluation point alpha. All parties generate a random challenge alpha and compute three shear rings f alpha, g alpha, and h alpha. Note that this reduces the problem of checking M modifications into a check of a single modification. The overall communication cost of batch-wise modification verification is order of M modification gates. An extension of the batch-wise modification verification is to check the correctness of a batch of M inner product tuples. This extension is first noted in the work NV18 the idea is basically the same as the check for multiplication tuples, except that we will need additional m minus one inner product operations instead of multiplication op operations. However, recall that the DIM protocol allows us to evaluate an inner product gate with the same cost as a multiplication gate. Therefore, the communication cost of batch-wise inner product verification is the same as the one for multiplication tuples that is, requires order of M multiplication operations. In essence, this technique allows us to reduce the check of M inner product tuples into one check of a single inner product tuple. Given M multiplication tuples, our idea is to first transform these M tuples to a single inner product tuple of dimension M. 
Furthermore, if one of the original modification tuples is incorrect, the single inner product tuple should also be incorrect. Therefore, it is sufficient to only check the single inner product tuple. To obtain a single inner product tuple, a straightforward way is to set the first vector x to be x1, x2 to xm, y to be y1, y2 to ym, and z to be the summation of zi. However, this is not sufficient. For example, if the adversary causes z1 to be x1 times y1 plus 1, and z2 to be x2 times y2 minus 1, the errors are cancelled in this tuple. Consider the following two polynomials f and g. The coefficients of f are xi times yi. The coefficients of g are zi. Then the task becomes checking whether these two polynomials are the same, which can be done by testing a random, po a random point alpha. Therefore, we can set the shear rings x, y, z in this form. We can verify that the inner product between x and y is f alpha, and z is g alpha. This way, we only need to check the single inner product tuple. However, we note that the dimension of this inner product tuple is m, where m is the number of multiplication gates. Even checking a single inner product tuple would cost us proportional to m. Therefore, our idea is to reduce the dimension by a factor of k, where k is a parameter. In step two, we want to reduce the dimension by a factor of k. For each of the two input vectors, we separate it into k sub vectors of the same dimensions. By using the DN inner product protocol, our parts computed the inner product for each pair of xi and yi. For the last pair, instead of using the DN protocol, we simply set dk to be, the, to be z minus the summation of the first k minus one result. In this way, if the original inner product tuple is incorrect, then at least one of the new inner product tuples is incorrect. Therefore, we only need to check the correctness of the new k inner product tuples. Note that the communication cost is just the k multiplication operation. To this end, we use the batchwise inner product verification to reduce the check of k inner product tuples into a check of a single inner product tuple. In particular, the dimension becomes m, m, uh, the dimension becomes m over k. The overall communication cost of step two is just the out of k multiplication operations, which is independent of m. In the last step, we just repeat step two enough times until the dimension of the final step becomes uh, the final tuple becomes one. To simplify the verification of the final tuple, we borrow the idea from NV18. In the final iteration, we add a random multiplication tuple as a mask. This allows us to directly open the final multiplication tuple and check the correctness. As for efficiency, we need to repeat log km times in step three. Since each iteration requires order of k multiplication operations, the overall communication complexity is order of k times log km multiplications, which is sublinear in M. A follow-up work has implemented our protocol and compared with the previously best known implementation result, the work by Cheetah and others in crypto 2018. The experiments use arithmetic circuits with 1 million multiplication gates in the line setting. The finite field is the 61-bit Merson field, all the numbers are the running time in milliseconds. We select two different kinds of circuits. One kind has depth 20, and the other one has depth 1,000. Different calls respond to different number of parties participating in the computation. We can see that when the circuit depth is 20, our protocol is about 1.7 times faster. When the circuit depth is 1,000, our protocol is about 1.6 times faster. This experiment results show that our protocol is also efficient in practice. So far, we have shown how to efficiently check the correctness of modifications. Combining with the DM protocol, we obtain a secure with the board protocol with the same efficiency as the semi-ons DM protocol. 
In the last part, we will focus on full security. Our protocol is obtained by compiling the secure with the board protocol. At a high level, we follow the idea of dispute control introduced in BTH06. This is a general strategy to achieve full security efficiently. The idea is to divide the circuit into small segments, then all parties evaluate each segment in sequence. When the computation aborts, all parties find where things went wrong and then rerun the current segment. When we look into a transcript of an aborted computation, either there is a corrupted party who does not follow the protocol, or there is a pair of parties who do not agree on the message sent from one party to the other. The main difficulty of using dispute control is to efficiently identify corrupted parties or disputed parties when the computation aborts. Recall that in our secure with the board protocol, in the end of the multiplication verification, all parties only need to verify a single multiplication tuple. Our idea is to compute a virtual transcript of this ultimate tuple. A virtual, a virtual transcript is not executed, but all parties should agree on the messages appearing on the transcript. Concretely, all parties will together compute a virtual transcript of the ultimate tuple as if they directly compute this tuple using the DM protocol. In this case, if the ultimate tuple is incorrect, it is sufficient to only examine this virtual transcript. Our idea is to follow the multiplication verification of our secure with the board protocol. At each step, we will compute a virtual transcript from the transcripts of the in input tuples. One feature of our approach is that all virtual transcripts can be computed without interaction. It means that we can obtain virtual transcripts for free and the overall communication complexity remains the same as the secure with the board protocol. We briefly discussed other issues of achieving full security. The first one is how the protocol is proceeds if one or more corrupted parties are bought. Note that when we use the DM protocol to evaluate the multiplication gates, the first party needs all the shares to reconstruct a db 2 d sharing. When one or more corrupted parties are bought, P1 will not receive enough shares to do the reconstructions. Our idea is to do a small surgery to the input sharings of each multiplication gate, such that the shares of aborted parties are zero. In this way, P1 no longer needs the aborted parties to send their shares. Our approach only requires two additional elements per party. This results in 7.5 field elements when one or more corrupt parties are bought. The second problem is that when we examine the ultimate transcript, we may find that the input sharings or the random double sharings are inconsistent. Note that the virtual transcript do not contain the generation of these sharings. We cannot know which party is cheating by just checking the virtual transcript. Instead, we need to go back to the generation precise of these sharings. To this end, we borrow the idea from BSF012 to add verifiability to Shamir signal sharings. This technique has overhead only epsilon element per party per gate, where epsilon is an arbitrarily small constant. We refer to our paper for more discussion about these two problems and our solutions. As a conclusion, we first see the construction of DM protocol, which is the best known summing on protocol. Surprisingly, DM protocol provides some kind of security when running in the fully managed setting. Based on this observation and the technique in BBCG plus 19, we are able to achieve security with the board with the same efficiency as the DM protocol. To further achieve full security, we rely on the general strategy called dispute control. However, three problems arise when considering the de detailed design of the protocol. We rely on the virtual transcript, small surgery, and the verifiable secret sharing to overcome the difficulties. And finally, achieve full security with comparable efficiency as the DM protocol. Thank you.